Hello everyone, welcome to the editorial analysis of the Shankar A's Academy brought to you by the Civil Speedia team and this is Abhinaya Sampath for today's editorial article analysis for the date of 5th of November 2024. So displayed here are the list of topics for discussion along with the mains practice question. So the first article discusses about two major verdicts would be that would be given by today by the Supreme Court where either the private property can be considered as a community resource and also Uttar Pradesh Madrasa law case and this article is from Indian Express and this uh, we would be discussing about their properties of the both cases and how it has implications or impact in order of the verdict and next article would be titled why November 5 matters about the major US elections among the Democratic and the Republic Party of the country and this article is again from the Indian Express. So we would be seeing the implications of this elections and uh, how it would be impacting India and US relationships. So in light of these two articles let us see the further video. The US presidential election holds an immense significance not only domestically but also globally. The article titled why November 5 matters of course it brings in us into the discussion of why even an election of some other country would be a big deal for a country like India and it would be a big deal even globally. For countries like India, the outcome impacts foreign policy, economic relations, security alignments and so on. So the US global influence remains a very crucial role as they continue to be one of the major actor of the world stage even though new power dynamics are emerging such as the China, uh, Russia and other nations for getting the influence. So in light of this article let us see a question and we would be seeing the framework for it. Looking at the election day November 5 US presidential election that is the Democratic nominee Kamala Harris of our Indian descent and the current vice president will face the Republican Donald Trump nominee which is wrapped up by this year's presidential race. So in every second week of the second day of November, US elections is a big deal, not only for the country US, but for the earth around globally. So first we need to see the most basic topic when it comes to this election, that is how this election would be impacting India and US relations. So when it comes to the economic partnership, US is one of India's largest trading partners with a bilateral trade reaching up to 72 billion which is a report in early 2024. So in our Indian money, it is almost 5,97,000 crore. So in sectors like technology, pharma, energy, defense, agriculture and so on, this much money has been invested. The election outcome could impact trade policies, tariffs, investment influencing India's economic growth. Looking into their strategic alliances, US is a key role in India's strategic partner to counter the China's influence when it comes to the Indo-Pacific. Of course, we know how there is support of the Quad that is US, India, Japan and Australia's uh, coherency and its stability also depends on US policies towards China and the Indo-Pacific as US is one of the major uh, contributor when it comes to this group. Looking into the defense and security, US partnership with India provide advanced technologies such as aiding of the Indians military modernization and their infrastructure. US arm export policy significantly affect India's defense capabilities. Looking into their technology and healthcare, India's tech industry is closely and very uh, intrusively linked to the US through software exports and research and development programships and partnerships. Of course, in health Care, US and India collaboration is very very essential for tackling pandemics and advanced vaccine researches and so on that we have seen especially during the age of COVID. Looking into our Indian diaspora which is one of the uh, most important aspect it's like a ghetto when it comes to our uh, US country. The United States has uh, almost 4 million plus strong Indian diaspora and it is the second largest immigrant group in the US. The Indian diaspora excels in many sectors like the politics, administration, entrepreneurship, technology, medicine, science, academician and a lot more. So they are most educated and highest earning Asian group in the US which had even made an impact through the US election also. Indian professionals particularly in the IT and engineering are very vital to the US business through the H1B 
visa program this h1b visa program it is a valid for 3 years and it can be extended one time for an additional 3 years so in general it is totally valid for maximum of 6 years so there is no limit to the number of h1b visas that an individual can have in or his or her lifetime so having the connectivity would be a very crucial part when it comes to indian diaspora so of course we have very high profile leaders like the sundar pichai satya nadella and uh, paraga agarwal to boost the india's reputation as a tech power house and a source of top talent king to the impact of indian americans so them after been in the us for a very long time they of course they have been recognized by as an indian americans indian americans played a very key role in advancing the 2005 indo us nuclear deal which uh, enforced the idea of soft diplomacy here india as the world's fifth largest economy is seen by the us as a valuable bilateral partner with shared democratic values so here the us is india's largest source of remittances that contributing to almost 26 billion dollars out of the 113 billion in the year of 2022 to 23 all alone here approximately there are 20% of indian unicorns have us educated co-founders that is for example example like phone pay is by rahul chari and for example the dream 11 is one of the idea masterminds of harsh jain and bavin seth for example here effective diplomacy and lobbying by the indian diaspora have uh, encouraged by the indo us civil nuclear deal and of course indian culture plays a very big uh, influence in the us such as yoga cuisine especially our organic farming and so on and ayurveda so finally like joint projects like nisar and uh, icet highlight their growing scientific cooperation between these two countries now just to have a a uh, small comparison on what would be the impact if the democratic nominee would be winning or if the republic nominee would be winning so when it comes to the indian uh, impact on indian us relationships if the democratic nominee would be winning here uh, there is uh, encouragement of south asian roots that the uh, indian heritage can shape the yeah, approach to india and us relation also continuation of biden's focus on economic resilience and domestic manufacturing would be a focus and it is also expected to uphold biden's firm stance against russia and their efforts to counter china and other aligning interest of india and if the republic nominee party would be winning let us see few impact on the indian us relations here india depend on trump's foreign policy trade relations and strategic partnerships as we have seen the government of modi and Donald Trump were a different era where uh, we have to tell that significantly this partnership have kept our Indian geography on the map when it comes to international relations. And next is uh, his approach would be shaped by the broader geopolitical landscape and their policy choices would be even more different from the Democratic nominee. And finally, is to have a strengthened U.S.-India relations through defense agreement, especially. and regional initiatives under pm modi and trump during 2017 and 2021 which have been earlier discussed so regardless of who is in power the us remains a central through evolving force in international affairs now moving on to the first editorial analysis the supreme court is set to rule on two cases one on whether private property qualifies as a material resource of the community under the article 39 class b of the indian constitution and another on the constitutionality of the uttar pradesh madrasa education act of 2004 the court's decision could impact the uh, balance between private ownership and community welfare and the bench has also examined past judgments on nationalization and state control over resources so in light of this article let us see what these two cases would be and its implications further in light of this article let us see the main question and let us see the framework to it now looking into the constitutional provisions on the property so under the directive principles of state policy article 39 class b and article 39 class c discusses on the equitable resource distribution 
which can benefit all sections of the society that is to prevent the concentration of power at a few members so this will lead to the promotion of social welfare as well as collective welfare here the state is encouraged to formulate policies and regulations to achieve this objective and also it helps to prevent exploitation due to over control of resources thus to create a very balanced economy wealth and resources should be accessible to all contributing to social and economic justice so here dpsps are not enforceable in courts but it aim to set a path for governance promoting equality and social justice now looking into the fundamentals rights when it comes to the right to property originally right to property was a fundamental right under article 31 here the 44th constitutional amendment act of 1978 removed right to property as a fundamental right and placing it as a legal right under the article 300a so under article 300a here individuals cannot be arbitrarily or unfairly deprived of their property by the state and if so they should be acquired in more legitimate and well defined law passed by the legislature here only if there is a specific law that is anything under the authority of law will only be interpreted by the justice so here fair compensation for the legislature will be authorized now looking into the other provisions such as the doctrine of nationalization and state control here nationalization is a policy where the government takes control of private assets to redistribute resources in favor of the public interest so therefore the idea is that any resources which is essential for a country's development for example like coal or banking it should be controlled by the state to ensure equitable distribution and prevent monopolies so this approach will be aligning with article 39b of dpsp to distribute the resources for the common good here few important cases uh, which have led to the process or the doctrinization of nationalization would be first case would be state of karnataka versus ranganatha reddy of 1978 where this case dealt with the nationalization of transport services so the supreme court held that the government's right to nationalize industries to promote social welfare and the next case study about sanjeev coke manufacturing versus the bharat uh, cooking coal limited of 1982 uh, reaffirm the importance of article 39b giving the state power to acquire private property if it benefits any community so these cases establish that the government could take over resources if they have aimed to prevent concentration of wealth and ensure equitable access so through these judgments let us see what would be the implications of judgments if uh, it has been interpreted by the supreme court first there would be strengthening of the property protection here the judgment can clarify the extent of the protection that private property owners can expect from the article 300a of the constitution which mandates that no person can be deprived of property except by the authority of law next is having an influence on the land acquisition here article 39b of the dpsp uh, helps to know about equitable resource distribution thus it helps to reinforce a state's power to acquire the private property for the common good so it can set guidelines by balancing public interest with the private property rights so that uh, a, a, resources like the land and so on can be able to get acquisition for public projects urban development and infrastructure expansions and so on next is to have an implication on investments here if we know about the private property and their rights it can enhance the power of the investors confidence to uh, get into a natural or a private resource so uh, under the article material resources can be private which are both natural as well as any private resources so if the judgment would be coming it can expand the state power for land acquisition or redistribution and thus it can lead the investors uh, 
responsibility when it comes to regarding land and property investments and finally it can affect the minorities right here <clears throat> the judgments may indirectly affect religious or minority institutions like the madrasas of the islamic community by settling a standard on the extent to which the state can regulate or acquire private property without infringing or um, intervening into community rights so if the state powers are being restricted religious institutions might find stronger grounds to contest regulations on property related interventions by the state so now we we'll let us look into the second half of the article which is the up madrasa education act of 2024 just to have an introduction first the objective is of the act is to integrate the madrasas into the state's educational framework for aiming of quality modern education in religious institutions by setting standards such as curriculum faculty and administration madrasa is nothing but it's a term uh, it, it's an arabic term to denote a type of educational institute especially for religious groups such as the islamic world so now looking into the controversies critics argue that the state regulation of madrasas can uh, infringe upon religious autonomy thus affecting article 25 and 30 article 25 of course it guarantees a freedom of concise and free profession practice and propagation of religion so when it comes to religion of course we need to know what is secularism and in the context of indian secularism unlike the western secularism uh, which advocates for a complete separation of state and religion indian secularism emphasizes equal respect for all religions so the state can intervene in religious matters to ensure social welfare and to prevent discrimination and maintain public order and so on so for example banning practices like untouchability is allowed to ensure public order and social justice here looking into the court's role uh, sorry role in defining secularism one of the major landmark case would be sr bombay case of the 1994 where there is it helped in defining secularism as a basic feature of the constitution preventing the state from favoring or discriminating against any religion we have also seen news uh, like even in the month of october we have seen how uh, secularism is a basic structure or a part of the constitution which has been interpreted by the supreme court in itself so now the supreme court is looking on how whether they are declaring the law as unconstitutional so if so let us see what all the impact Uh, impact would be first is the impact on the madrasa education here if the act is declared unconstitutional the judgment would limit the state's power to regulate religious education reinforcing the autonomy of madrasas so it can impact educational rights of minorities in india and at the same time looking into the broader implications this ruling can act against the act in itself where it can influence other state laws regulating religious schools as a former uh, which can emphasize the judiciary's role in maintaining the secular nature of the state while protecting cultural and religious diversity so it has both the sides of a coin when it comes to re- declaring this law as unconstitutional so it can also necessitate uh, states to revisit and carefully draft educational policies which concerns the minority institutions to avoid constitutional conflicts thank you so much for watching this video don't forget to give a like comment and a share and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to further not to miss any other content so thank you so much and have a great day